thank you for joining us today. It's a beautiful beginning of the week and it's more beautiful uh, guest honor of today's uh, who is uh, uh, Dr. Uh, Nabi Berkut from uh, International Law Department. So uh, hello, doctor. How are you today? Hello, I'm very good. Thank you very much. How are you? Thank you so much. Uh, it's my pleasure and thank you so much for uh, joining us uh, today for our new session of our project, Let's Be Connected, uh, where we are uh, having the live uh, conversation interaction with our uh, lecturers and professors. So uh, today, I believe we're going to provide some information about International Law Department. Thanks to you so much. Thank you very much for the invitation and the, um, this project. Uh, maybe start with, uh, could you uh, give some brief information about yourself and uh, how did you uh, come up uh, to join our uh, big uh, Near East University family? Okay. Um, as you say, my name is um, Nabi Berkut. I was born in 1990 in Nicosia. Um, I did my bachelor degree in the Greek side um, in Cyprus. After that, I applied for the um, EU scholarship and I went to United Kingdom for my master's degree. And after that, when I came back, um, I applied for the lecture training program of the nearest university to do my PhD and um, become an assistant lecturer as well. So in 2014, I started my um, job and the PhD and I finished my PhD last January, and since then I'm working as a head of the International Law Department. That's excellent. Uh, very nice to have you here. Uh, thank you so much. Uh, speaking about uh, International Law Department, uh, could you please uh, introduce uh, about the subjects and topics uh, that this program covers while students are studying? Of course. Um, Actually, the program was established in 2013, one year before I came to Nearest University. And since back to that time, we had only four students. And the program based on common law system, but offering international law and European law as well. So actually, it, it is a kind of um, very unique program in the worldwide that giving the students um, a comparative um, law systems as well um, apart from giving the first degree in law our program has master program and the phd as well and right now we have more um, students more than from 20 countries that's very nice uh, what about the uh, mainly subjects? So, as you mentioned, it also uh, covers uh, European law and international law, right? Yeah. Um, as I said, it's based on common law. So, we're following the um, United Kingdom law system, actually, ah, as okay. Cyprus was also um, a colonized country by United Kingdom. Um, so in the first cup, um, in the first two years, we're giving courses like very core courses, constitution law, contract law, um, English legal system, um, history of law, and so on. And after from the second year, we start to give um, more courses regarding international law, law of the sea, humanitarian law, human rights, and European Union law. So actually, after the base um, common law, we we apply um, international law for the students. Oh, that's very nice. Uh, what about assessment uh, assessment methods that is being used for the students to evaluate uh, their progress? Um, well, we believe as an institution that a law student should express him or herself um, written and oral. So in the assessments, we apply three different um, methods. First, we want the students to give us um, a research-based assignments, and after that, in-class presentations, and at the end, of course, a classic um, examination style, written exam. Okay. So it's um, in three ways. In three it's methods. also it's also uh, it includes also midterm exam, right, and final exams. Yeah. Yes. 
midterm oh. and final exams, but we um, it's up to the lecturers, but we use this method very much in the master degrees as well. Um, we're giving research assignments and in-class presentations. That's very good. Uh, what about the opportunities for the students uh, who would like to broaden their understanding? For example, if they do not understand some subject, uh, how they can uh, get better understanding about it? What kind of facilities maybe there is available? Um, first of all, I want to mention about a couple of points that um, we're using in our department. We do offer optional courses for the students from other faculties like sociology, political science, international relations, which, um, which make them to have education interdisciplinary. Apart from that, we're giving um, optional courses in our program that um, broaden their knowledge about the core courses they are already taking. So, if they have any problem about their core courses, with these optional courses, they do have a second chance to improve themselves about those courses. That's very nice. Uh, I think that it's a very good idea, uh, the students, that they do not only uh, get the education about uh, law, but they also can get uh, some uh, also ideas about the other uh, subjects, other programs uh, and topics as well. As you said, it's uh, giving interdisciplinary uh, uh, option for the students. So it's very nice for uh, from the department, this option for the students. Uh, thank you so much. Uh, continuing uh, about the uh, better understanding uh, and uh, education of this for the students does the department has like mandatory requirement for the summer training programs is there a, a such a requirements for the students no we don't have um, such a requirements the first reason about this um, as you know um, law is a bit different than other um, professions so every country has their own um, legal system and they have their own requirements. So um, we do not apply any summer training programs for the students, but we believe that um, the theoretical um, knowledge should be get stronger by the practice. So in our department, we have law clinic and moot court. Um, we establish a moot court um, teams among from our students and they went to Istanbul and Leiden in Netherlands for the competitions and they even get um, success in the international platform. So instead of these um, outside training programs, we we apply it um, in our department. That's very good. Uh, I believe it's uh, for the students is very uh, excited uh, to have such a practice, especially internationally, because it's all about what they most of the students going to do in their uh, real life after the study. So it's nice that they are already practicing it during their studies. Yes. Uh, from your uh, teaching experience, Dr. Berkut, uh, could you give some uh, uh, some information in your opinion? Uh, what qualities do successful student uh, possesses who studies this course? Um, well, of course, people who are applying to the low education they do have humanities intelligence, social intelligence. I believe that. Um, but the intelligence is not the key part. I believe the passion is the key point for the success because um, the students who are um, going classes and study hard um, continuously getting the success at the end so I believe that the willing to willing to work hard and the ambitious is the key for being successful. That's the, my experience um, from the students that I taught before. Yes, I believe the, the passion as well is the 
uh, the vehicle for the students uh, who uh, push them through their education uh, years that they would not uh, give up and continue studying the, the program that they chose and they want it and uh, is willing to get graduated. And of course, uh, in the future, it would be their profession uh, as, the, as the job, uh, from the job perspective. Yes. Um, also, as you mentioned, that uh, we have some uh, postgraduate programs. So does the students continuing their postgraduate uh, studies and uh, what would be the advantages for the students to, to study master or even PhD degree? Um, well, there are a serious number of students who continue their postgraduate um, studies um, in our department. Well, the bachelor degree provides fundamental knowledge and to the students in order to be able to work um, in their profession. But the postgraduate studies um, giving the education for those who desire to be expert on more specific area. So it increases the chance of the job opportunities um, in that very specified um, field. So for example, if a person wants to be a human rights lawyer, um, in an international organization. The, our program is very organized about that area because the international law uh, master program giving the international law in the master degrees and also the other um, international law fields, humanitarian law, human rights law, which make that person to be more specialized in those areas. So, the master degree will help them to get there at some point. Uh, I would also uh, uh, like to ask a uh, little bit more specific to this question. Uh, for example, if the student, uh, as you said, wants to be uh, more specified in the human rights, let's say, uh, the master program is the also the general program who educates the students uh, in the general uh, subject like aspect or uh, the students at the end can uh, specify the the profession exactly uh, in which area they want to be more uh, how to say spe uh, specified uh, specialist as well uh, i'm going to answer as i understand the question so the program is international law llm Yes. And um, so we're offering seven courses and the thesis. So the seven courses out of 10, and um, the students have chance to choose their seven courses among those 10 or 11 courses. So um, these courses include international economy law, international law of the sea, humanitarian law, aviation law, arbitration law, human rights law. So the students will take all these courses, but um, as the students know what what she or he wants to be sp um, specialized on, they will choose their um, thesis on that specified topic. So it will um, it will say at the end in the degree international law LLM, but the thesis will show on which field they get specialized. Yes, thank you so much. That's exactly what I asked about that. As you said, that uh, there is those courses that they can uh, select the number minimum of seven, right? So uh, thank you so much for such a great uh, answer about it. Uh, also, uh, continuing, what is the most important for the students? It's the job opportunities. Uh, but, uh, so what they will do and what they can do after they graduate. So uh, maybe they, uh, you can also shed some light on what's, what would be the difference of job opportunities for the ones who graduated from bachelor degree and the ones who graduated from master degree as well. Okay. Um, on a successful completion of this program, um, the students will be able to employ it in the fields um, relevant to the legal profession, um, such as advocates, lawyers, judges, notaries, legal consultants, um, private and public organizations, 
non-governmental um, organizations and private companies. Um, but if they do master as well, they do have chance to um, go on and get a job in the academic area, or um, they will get three steps faster than the undergraduate um, graduates. So the the fields maybe stay same with the um, graduates and the postgraduates. But the postgraduates will have one step um, further to have the chance to have a, a better job opportunities. Okay, that's uh, that's very good, uh, especially that, that we do offer the master and PhD programs for the students. So the ones who would like to uh, to get further, of course, there is the opportunity at our university to do so. Uh, yeah. One of That's our graduate is now a um, researcher, research assistant in our department as well. Well, that's really excellent. Yeah. Uh, also, about the current and already graduated students, uh, we know that uh, sometimes students are reaching out for uh, their uh, lecturers, professors. So, uh, what about uh, your department, uh, is there opportunity for the students to reach out even they are graduated and also for the current student for uh, help or assistance if they need some additional knowledge or advice? Yes, of course. I mean, they they already doing this um, they can apply for the advice during or after the education to us. Actually, before our live streaming, I get a WhatsApp message from one of my um, former students from Canada. So he was asking about um, some ideas. So these students can feel free to apply for us. Uh, our lecturers, our assistants will always um, try their best about um, helping students out. Um, we are email though because usually the phone numbers will get around everywhere and we get 24 seven uh, phone calls. Yes, of course, uh, that happens. Uh, about uh, one more uh, very specific thing, uh, which is very important for the student, especially international students, since uh, our university is very uh, international uh, university in uh, respect to that we have so many uh, students from abroad. Uh, what about the accreditation of this program and diploma? Okay, as I mentioned in the very first minutes of our um, interview, every state has different legal systems. So um, this is same for all the countries that when one student um, graduate from a university from another country, when they went back to their home country, um, they may require to have a couple of um, more low subjects to get their um, license to be a lawyer in their home country. But regarding the um, accreditation, our law program is um, very strong in that mention because we have um, as I said, students from more than 20 countries, and we are getting our accreditation from different countries. Actually, um, in the February, our um, international law department became the first institution that has accreditation from Nigerian law school. That's excellent. Yeah, it was a big achievement for us. Um, I'm very happy about that because approximately 35% of our students are from Nigeria and it was very important. Also, um, as our department adapt itself for the students to have better chances. For example, um, Zimbabwe wants thesis for their, um, from our students to have chance to have the license to work there. So we created the class thesis and the students who want to graduate has to take the thesis and write a um, um, graduation project. That's so very good to know, yes. Yeah, we are applying that as well. 
That's very good to know, especially uh, the, this aspect as well about uh, Zimbabwean. Uh, I'm very happy to hear that, uh, as you mentioned, that we have accreditation for uh, from Nigeria, which is uh, very important for a uh, big part of our students uh, as well. Uh, thank you so much for sharing this information with us. Uh, also, a little bit about more current situation, uh, which I would uh, specify as COVID-19 situation that uh, has touched all of us uh, and especially the education part. So could you give some information about online classes of the last semester and uh, how examination uh, went through as well? Uh, maybe there is some ideas about uh, what will be done uh, for the next semester, maybe differently, or uh, everything was okay and it's gonna continue same as the last semester? Well, as you mentioned, the COVID-19 pandemic um, showed us how fragile humanity is against mother nature. Um, but the good side of the humanity is that we know how to adapt to new situations. So uh, nearest University showed how um, strong and organized institution we are, that we directly apply the online um, education system. Um, so students didn't lose their um, last semester from their lives. Um, well, we also as an international law department, we directly applied our online education system via site, um, online applications like Zoom, Meet Google. And I believe that this experience helped both to us, to lecturers and to students as well. So um, this gives to students to work from their home, to use online applications much better to get uh, um, their assignments, presentations, and even exams online. Um, I think this online education with or without COVID-19 will continue for the next semester and next years, but I don't know how it will be. And um, probably it will be like percentage, 70% in class, 30% um, online. But I believe that the online class system should uh, should continue. That's good to know that, uh, as you said, that uh, we were so fast to update and uh, adjust all the educational system and put everything what was uh, during uh, during regularly in the classes. Uh, everything was just transferred to a digital platform. Uh, thanks as well to technologies and as well to specialists, uh, the people, the team, uh, and of course, uh, international law department team uh, who was able to, to do it so fast and of course, uh, in a good quality matter. Yeah. And also um, a point I forget, I just remember, Uze Beam um, did very, very good um, work on that, that students right now have chance to go back from the very first uh, week of the class and find the documents from there. So all the 14 weeks documents are online there all the time. So students can find their documents and the um, ingredients, contents of the classes whenever they want. And it's usually not working the same way when we were um, teaching in the class. That's very good because uh, sometimes the students uh, in some uh, circumstances, uh, so, some reasons, they sometimes cannot attend the class uh, physically. So in this case, they always have a chance uh, to get the information, get the subjects, and uh, as well, even if it's not enough, they can read it twice or three times even. So very good. Exactly. Exactly. Uh, Thank you so much, uh, Dr. Berkut. Uh, for the end, uh, we, I would like to ask you uh, your advice for our prospective students uh, who would like to choose this program. And as, uh, of course, for our current students, uh, maybe who is thinking to continue their studies for master and PhD. Uh, so could you give some advice for uh, prospective international law students? 
Yes. Um, first of all, I don't want to be re repeat to you, but um, my first advice is to have the passion, because without have willing to do, you cannot be good at anything. I mean, even if you are a football player, even if you are lawyer, whatever you are, you have to be good at it. That's why we live in this life. So I believe that um, people should find their passion. And from my experience, sometimes the students who graduate from high school might don't have idea what to do. And they choose a random subject to study. And I, I mean, it can happen. It's 18 years old um, people. They, they will have different ideas. But um, at the time, I was lucky that I knew that I wanted to be a lawyer. So I, was, I had the passion about it. So first thing is to be um, willing what you are going to do. And after that, during the education, they have to work hard as well. But my, my last advice will be enjoy it because if you are going to study in abroad, you are going to um, experience different culture, different country, meeting with new people, um, having another life apart from your family. And actually they are, those will be the best years of um, their lives. So yeah, my advice will be enjoy it. Thank you good. so much. Yeah. Thank you so much, uh, Dr. Tabiberkut. Uh, thank you so much for joining us today, uh, accepting our invitation. Uh, I hope it reached our viewers and gave them better understanding about the international law program and department itself. It was my pleasure to host this conversation today with you and I wish you endless energy and ideas uh, in, your, uh, in your life and in your educational life. So thank you so much. Thank you very much for your invitation and the program. It was my pleasure. It was excellent. Thank you. Thank you so much. Uh, hope to see you soon, uh, very soon again. Uh, it was uh, head of department of international law, Dr. Nabi Berkut. Uh, see you soon. Uh, thanks to all our watchers, uh, viewers. Uh, thank you for joining us today. Do not hesitate to contact us if you have any questions directly uh, through our social media or uh, our uh, email address, uh, which will be typed very soon uh, at the bottom of the screen. You can see it now. Uh, don't forget that at the moment we are having a postgraduate scholarship admission. So do not miss a chance to, to get a scholarship scholarship uh, in the education that you would like to study. Uh, let's be connected on Thursday. Again, we will have the guest honor, Professor Dr. Uh, Tulen Saner from the Faculty of Tourism and Hotel Management. Let's be connected. See you soon on Thursday.